What's up guys, today I'm going to talk about weightlifting for beginners and that will include a basic workout routine you can do for yourself as well as how that will progress and then just general tips like you know, how many sets should I be doing? What rep ranges? How much should I rest? How can I recover? All of those types of things. And I wanted to put this video together because I know it can be a little bit intimidating to get into a lifting routine, especially if you're not accustomed to the equipment, movements, or the overall gym environment. So with this video, I hope you can gain some confidence and turn this interest of yours into a long-term lifestyle. So when you consider what the best weightlifting program is for beginners, I like to recommend the general pull, push, legs routine. Obviously that's going to be your back and bicep day, your chest and tricep day, and then your you know leg day. And I would break that down a little bit further um, just to give you an idea. So pull day, that's going to be rows, pull downs, and then you know maybe isolation bicep at the end. Push day, that's like your bench press, maybe shoulder press, anything like that, and then triceps at the end. And leg day, I like to alternate between a squat day, which is quad dominated, and then a deadlift day, which is more hamstring and glutes. But, you know, that's me being a little bit more advanced. If you're not comfortable with these kind of free weight movements yet, you could just stick to machines for now. But in general, this is how I like to get people started. Pull, push, legs. You can do that on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split, and then maybe get more advanced, add in more days as you get comfortable with all of these different movements. And speaking of movements, we should probably talk about body weight versus free weight. And this is actually how I would suggest you get into just the weightlifting environment in general. There are three basic steps. You wanna get comfortable doing body weight exercises like push-ups, pull-ups, and squats. Then you want to do weighted versions of those exercises, but with a light weight and at high reps. So for bench press and squats, for example, you would use an empty bar. For rows, you might use light dumbbells. And then the third step here is just to gradually increase the weights that you use, lower your rep range, and incorporate more weightlifting movements. And the idea here is just to get comfortable with the body weight exercises first, and then transition into free weights once you have that coordination and are a little bit more acclimated to the exercises. But I know what you're thinking, what about machines? So comparing free weights to machines, basically what you're thinking about is the option to do compound movements and isolation movements with your free weights or more you know, typical isolation movements when it comes to machines. And people ask, you know, are free weights better than machines? Not necessarily, they both have their purpose, but in general, free weights are where you really get strong because you need to stabilize that weight with your body, whereas a machine is going to take off some of that load for you. Um, and then people say, oh, well, aren't free weights dangerous? It just depends. You know, that's why you start light, you get used to the movement, you do high reps at first, and you shouldn't have issues. Whereas with machines, sometimes based on your build and just how your body is naturally, you might be required to move in a certain way that's not comfortable. For example, shoulder press i like to have it kind of close to my chest you probably can't see very well but like i'm here i'm pushing up but a lot of machines will have it out in front of you and you can see your shoulder angle comfortable is more parallel with your chest and they'll have it out in front and that really puts strain on your shoulder so it's just something to think about machines aren't always necessarily safer than free weights it just sort of depends but then speaking about compound versus isolation movements again they both have their purpose, but to maximize strength, I would suggest incorporating both with a focus on your compound movements. And a compound movement would be like squat, where that's going to use a lot of core strength, quads, some glutes. And then an isolation example might be like a hamstring curl, where you know you have a machine that really focuses on only that area of your hamstring and maybe gets a little bit of glutes. So that's why a lot of people focus on the big three powerlifting movements of squat, bench press, and deadlift those are really going to build up your overall strength. They're pretty athletic movements. They involve a lot of different muscles. But then, you know, the isolation movements are icing on the cake. They're, they allow you to focus on areas that are not hit in those movements. Or, you know, like a heavy row is very back dominated, but maybe you wanna hit bicep with a little bit more focus to get your arms bigger. So they both serve a purpose, but again, I would focus on your compound lifts first and then move into some of those isolation slash machine movements. You should also consider doing some cardio and you know, do you do that before or after weights? That kind of comes down to preference, but in general, I would say you should do your main cardio after your workout because if you're doing more than several minutes on any type of cardio, um, maybe running, 
doing a bike, whatever it is, you're going to start using energy that you need for your explosive, you know, compound movements that we're just talking about. Um, so what I would say is maybe do a few minutes, like on a stationary bike, maybe walking uphill to warm up. That'd be an active warm up, loosen up your muscles, do your workout, and then do any kind of cardio, um, additional cardio after the fact or on a different day altogether. A lot of people also wonder when's the best time to work out. And what I would say is, you know, unfortunately that's dictated by our schedules. But if I could choose any time of day, I would say late morning so that you're a little bit loosened up, um, you're not fatigued from going through your whole day and you can get a good workout in that day. And then also scientifically, your lung capacity is greatest kind of in that late afternoon slot. Um, so maybe you think several hours or like three or four hours after lunch, something like that, after you've digested, though you might be a little bit tired at that point of the day, um, your lung capacity is gonna be higher. So maybe you get a little bit better performance. And the only caveat there I would say is if you're taking a pre-workout with a lot of caffeine, that may impact your sleep quality. So you have to pay attention to that with those later workouts. Overall though, I would just say find a consistent time that you can adapt to over time and that's gonna be your best bet to have the most progress, feel comfortable and just you know get into a routine. Then as you progress in your weightlifting journey, you're gonna hear that term progressive overload. What does that mean? It's basically a fancy term meant for increasing the intensity of your workouts over time and you know, common sense, that's just how you're going to get stronger, how you're going to get better, how you're going to improve your performance. If you just do the same thing every day, you're not going to get that much stronger. So that means, you know, increasing the amount of reps that you do, increasing the weight that you use. And, you know, like I said, kind of common sense, but a lot of people really focus on that progressive overload term. Um, you know, it's, it's not it's not as complex as people make it sound. You just have to work harder to get better. That's all it is. But that brings us into you know some of the frequency you should be doing. So um, how many exercises should I do per workout, for example? I would say at first you should maybe do three to four, keep it kind of light, and then as you advance, you add in more. Um, the general consensus on this ranges quite a bit, but typically four to eight is a is a good range more than that you're kind of getting into that ter territory where you may not be getting the most benefit um, you're not really focusing on a certain exercise to get stronger in and you're just kind of doing the scatter approach it's it's not as useful i, I really hate that muscle confusion um, idea basically i would say if you could maximize a few key lifts like the power lifting lifts that's going to get you very strong in a lot of different areas and that will translate well to your other movements that you use as a supplement after those. Then as far as how many sets and reps, again, that's going to vary by your skill level. Starting off, you should probably only do a handful of sets, maybe three or four, and that will be at a lightweight for high reps. And by high reps, I mean maybe eight to 12. And you also don't wanna lift that close to failure when you're first starting off. You kinda of have to figure out your body, see, just where your baseline strength is. Um, so you want to you want to do it in a way where you know you can finish that 8 to 12, but maybe it starts to get a little bit difficult toward the end. Then as you're progressing, you know, you add in more sets. I, I have days where not including warm-ups, you know, which takes a while to warm up. I might be doing like eight or nine sets on an exercise. It just depends uh, kind of how I feel that day and, you know, other factors. So um, as you progress, you just add in more more sets. Uh, more reps, you start to vary how many reps you're doing. Um, basically the goal is to increase your overall volume and then you wanna have days where you're still going kinda light to keep it low intensity. So that's your kinda eight to 12 rep range. Um, then you kinda bring it down as you're getting more intense. So um, you might have a four to six reps or two to three reps or even singles. And with those, generally what you want to do at this point is to try to find weights where those final reps are pretty tough but doable so you want to feel like you have maybe one or two left in the tank um, and that that's kind of a good baseline because if you're burning out every single time you're not going to have a very long workout and that's going to hurt you in the long run as far as rest between sets typically you're shooting for two to five minutes um, if you're you know pretty new i'd keep it on the shorter end and then as you're getting into heavier weights maybe you take a three or four minute break it also depends on the exercise the big compound movements take longer to recover so you know, for squats, I might take three or four minutes. Whereas if I'm just doing, you know, an incline machine for my chest, you know, I, I just rest two minutes, something pretty quick, get back on it, just keep going. So now that you got a good idea of what you could do for your workouts, um, how you can progress through them, we'll talk about recovery and 
In that sense, you're gonna have your active recovery days and then your rest days. And what I'd suggest is to do kind of light recovery workouts after your high intensity days to loosen up. So that could be going to the gym and doing really low weight for high reps, kind of minimal exertion, or you could have an active rest day where you're just going for a bike ride, you're not even in the weight room. Um, other times, you might just need a full rest day where you're not really doing much of anything, maybe just some light stretches and things like that. So that's where you're going to learn how to adapt to your body, um, just see what works for you. A lot of that varies, but you do need rest days to build strength because as you're building strength, you're damaging your muscle and it needs to recover. So you know, rest days are very important. Speaking about damaging your muscles, people ask, you know, I'm pretty sore, should I work out today? And that's another thing, you need to figure out your body, but typically when you're weightlifting, you're going to be sore a lot. So I would just say, if you're sore, go work out, see how it goes. Um, if it really starts to feel like something's injured, then you might wanna say, okay, um, I'm gonna see if I could do light weights and if it still hurts, maybe I just focus on stretching that day and, you know, kind of sit it out. That's something where as you learn your body, that will become more clear. But in general, if you're sore, just go work out. And a similar thing for if you're feeling sick, um, if you just, you know, have a, a light fever or you're feeling pretty sluggish, don't feel quite right, just go into the gym. I mean, a lot of times that movement will help you feel better. Or get It'll get your blood flowing and you'll recover a little bit faster than you would if you just sat around on your butt all day. Uh, but if you do have like a high fever, body aches, then yeah, you should sit that out, you know, hydrate and, you know, sa save those workouts for the future because you don't want to get other people sick. That's just going to make it harder on yourself. So, um, you know, pay attention to how you're feeling. But in general, again, I like to err on the side of going and having a light workout rather than doing nothing. So that really wraps it up for the beginning weightlifting tips I have. Other articles and videos I've made pertain to nutrition, um, supplements you can take, your overall mindset, and I would suggest checking those out. Um, but other than that, you know, I hope this video was helpful. I'd like to see more people get into this weightlifting lifestyle because it changed my life for the better in a tremendous way and it could do the same for you. So give it a shot, um, stick with it. If, you, if you're gonna go on this journey, do it for several months, see how it goes, um, and I'd be willing to bet that you'll stick with it for the long term. But with that, signing off, I'll see you next time.